Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Well, as you can see by the display, in this one we're going to do something we probably shouldn't do. I'm going to hook the Nexion directly up to the ESP32. I'm going to use the USB port to plug into the computer, and then I'm going to take the VN, and I'm going to plug it into the VN of the Nexion display. And as I've read online, some people do this, some people don't. I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to use the basic display, because I think if I were to get a much larger display, that I could get into some trouble with it. But for this one, we'll just use a small basic display. I'm also going to send a negative number to the Nexion. I had a comment on a video where someone asked me if I'd ever sent a negative number to the Nexion and how it worked. And I had never done it. And I guess that they had never done it either. And this is the basic display for the Nexion. For the first part, where we just hook it up and send some data to it, just to show that VN pin, I'm just going to go over these first few fields. This N0 field is set to display in decimal. And if you see, you can display in hex, currency, or decimal. And the N1 field is the same, only it's going to show the values in hex. We'll either copy the values from N0 to N1, so that you can see them represented both ways, or in the ESP32, I'll just send it to both of them. I'm going to go over to the ESP32 next. Now, we're not going to do a lot in the, in the ESP. We're just going to send some values to, to display on the Nexion. But when I'm using it, I'm using my standard configuration. There'll be a link down in the description to the video file that goes over my standard setup. If I'm using a Nano, I need to include the software serial down here. But since the uh, ESP has a built-in serial 2 port, I can comment those lines out. The other thing I'm going to do is the delay. I'm only going to send information to the Nexion every 5 seconds. That way you'll be able to see it alternate between a couple of values. And the onboard LED on the Nano is pin 13 but on the ESP it's pin 2. At least my version it's pin 2. Down here in the main loop it's just going to stay. We won't do anything with this. We're not going to collect any data from the Nexion and we're only going to run this delay function and then we'll ignore this down here for now. So on the delay tab, on the delay tab we're going to turn that LED, the onboard LED, on and off every five seconds. And then we're going to send some data to the Nexion based upon that timing. And if the LED is on, or digital read 2 is positive, we're going to send the string to N1, or N0 and N1, we're going to send 300. We'll take that integer and turn it into a string. And then when the light's off, we're going to send negative 300. And this will just let us know, can we send a negative number to the Nexion? Now, on my ESP32, I have a VN and ground, and they're right next to each other. And I have those feeding out to my Nexion display. And then on the other side of it, I've got RX2 and TX2, and I have those going to the pins on the Nexion display. And that's all I have right now. So when I plug in the USB, it should come up. The, LED, or the Nexion display should light up because I measured it earlier, and the VN, when you plug in the USB, puts out about 4.6 volts. Now, I asked somebody who, who knows a little bit about the Nexions, and they say they want to run on 6 volts as a good value, so there is a chance that it won't work. But it did work earlier, so I'm confident it should. And you can see that it comes on, but, but I'll have the editor put in a warning right about now because we definitely shouldn't do this. Is it, oh, can you play ball in the house? Sure you can, but you'll end up breaking a vase. Can you run with scissors? Sure you can, but you'll end up putting an eye out. So as they always say, this is just for testing and you probably should never hook this up because you'll end up either burning out your ESP or maybe breaking the display. And if anyone knows, Nexion isn't always the best at getting back to you when you when you have an issue with the displays. So, so if you try this, do it at your own risk. Now I'm going to upload the code to the ESP. 
Now in the last video it didn't make me press that little button, but if it does this time I'm going to keep it on this screen. If I don't have to, I'll just break to where it's we're on the next shin and it's showing the values. And you can see it's sending negative 300, then it's sending 300. And you can see the LED cycling up there on the ESP. You can see we have the decimal version up here and the hex version down here. And the reason I wanted to show you the hex version is you can see this number is quite a bit larger on the hex version. And if you were to get your calculator out and convert that, you wouldn't get negative 300. You have to understand that the nection looks at everything as if it's a long. And what it considers a long is four bytes long. You can see the FF, FF, FE, D4. So four sets of hex numbers. And we're going to get into that in a little bit on the Nexium side of things, if you're interested in following this video all the way to the end. Otherwise, you can see that if you want to send a negative number to the Nexium, you just send it, and it, it's able to compile it. It comes in as a string, but it works just fine. But I was wondering if the data would look different down here if it was a long instead of an integer. So what I've done is I've cast the 300 to a long and then turned it into a string and we're going to send it up and we'll see if it behaves any differently. And you can see it, exa it operates exactly the same thing. So the Arduino must take that whatever it is, an integer, a long, probably a float, anything, and just turns it into a string and sends it up. And then the Nexion turns that string into the value that it wants to display. And I'm assuming down here, when it goes to the 300, it, it actually has four more zeros, that it's using the long in memory. It's just not dis displaying them. It only displays sets of two. And once again, I'll show you that when we get over to the next and how when we increment it, you'll see zeros start to form to the left. Now the maximum number or positive number in a signed long is this number right here. And in order for the next to show a negative number, it's the same range, zero to this big number, only it's added to this number. So once we go above it, and I've incremented it by two, you'll see that this will show up as a negative number down here. And this is the hex version of it. What it's really looking at, the next one looks at the most significant bit, which would be if this is an eight, so that means the bit furthest to the left is a one, and up here it's a zero. Up here it is the maximum number we can have before we flip that most significant bit from a 0 to a 1. And you'll see that this bottom one here will display as a negative number. Now I'm sending up the hex to see if that'll work. Can I send it in hex or does it have to be an integer? So you can see this is the positive number, 47, and this is the negative number. And you can see this is coming through as garbage and it's going back and forth between the two. But we know that we're not sending 47. We sent the same number with a 49. So what happens is that 47, when it hit 48, and then it hit 49, it started to count backwards. So if I had had it at 48 instead of 49, this number would have been 648 at the end instead of 647. As the number goes up, this value goes down, or the negative goes down. I'll show you that here next. We'll change this to a 52 or a 51, and so it should go down two more. So instead of 47, when we get to the negative, it should be 45. And the other thing we'll do is we'll send these as values, since we determined that that doesn't work. And now you can see that we're, we're working, we're showing the hex properly. But you'll also notice that this number is negative up here, but the bottom number is going to continue to count up. If you had a calculator and you put this number into it, it wouldn't be this number. It would be that positive number that we're sending to it. It would be this 51 at the end. So that 8 all those zeros and a 3 in hex converts to this number, not the negative. It's the nection taking half of that long value and interpreting it as negative and the other half as positive. We'll do one more test. 
So for this we're going to send two different examples. We're going to send a, a large number. It's a positive integer but it's higher than what a positive integer should. And this we're going to denote it as a negative but it's going to be lower than what a positive number would be if we didn't have the negative. If we got rid of this negative that would display as the positive number. But since we're sending the negative we'll see what we get. And this one comes through just as we sent it but the other one had a 3 in the front of it. But it's interpreting it if you were to subtract that the other number from it and maybe the editor can throw it on there you should get a number close to this. Now we're going to move on to the next and just play a little bit with these values. Now in the next I have these which I've already described. So I have a text version of a 1, a number version of a 1, and then the hex version of a 1. And then this button, all it's going to do is it'll increment n0, and then it will copy it down to here and copy it up to here. Now we have to use that covex for up here. And same thing down here, only it's going to decrement n0 and then do the same thing, copy the value. So you'll be able to see them in text format. I don't really know why I did the text format. It doesn't do anything other than show the same value as n0. But if you're not familiar with Covex, that's how you do it. And then this is going to send the value out the serial port. It's just going to send N0. So we can see if there's a difference between sending a number in decimal format and down here a number in hex format. And you'll notice we're printing a value. So I don't know how many people have done that or if they know if you can. Sometimes in my videos I convert that over to a a string and then I send it because then you're sending it in the form like 100 is 100. Otherwise you'll see in this version it'll turn it into a hex value. And then for this shift what we're going to do is we're going to take the, a single byte or we're going to shift bytes in the number over to the left and what will happen is every time you shift that one over it'll double in value. I'll have the editor um, put up a graphic to kind of display this as we go through it. So we're going to increment n0 as long as it's greater than 0. If it's less than 0, then we're just going to subtract 1 from it. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to copy it to n1 and we're going to copy it up to t0. I'll run this and, and show you why it is that I'm showing it this way. Okay, so this is in debug now and you can see that all of these are 1. If I send n0, you can see that we're sending four bytes of data and that's the value of one. Now it sends it backwards so the least significant byte is to the left and the most significant is to the right. If I send n1 which is the hex version it's the same thing and you'll notice that sending these are the same. If I shift what I have here over one it'll become two and then if I send it, you can see that it's the same. Now if I decrement this, when I decrement this one more time, you're going to see that this is going to be the actual value down here. And this will be how it's displayed up here. And the value is all Fs. And as this number goes down, this number will go up. And you can see that the value on the far left bit is a 1 and that's why that is a negative value. Now if I go back up, now I'm going to show it to you in a different way. So we're going to shift the bit, oh, i got to start with a 1, we're going to shift this one bit over one at a time and every time it will double. And you can see there will always be two digits out here or it will always be groups of two. And this will change to a negative once we get eight digits out here and this last one gets a one in it or becomes an eight. So now, right now we became a negative. But if I decrement this by one, 
This is the largest number you can have. And you can see that this is all ones except for that last bit. I increment it again. And that is the largest negative number, or the most negative number you can have. And as I increment this, you can see that this is going up, but this is going down. And that's kind of important to know as you're writing code or as you're gathering data and working with unsigned numbers and signed numbers, that that's how it worked. An unsigned integer is the same thing, you just only have one byte of data. I'll send this again and you'll see how that this is backwards. So you can see that the 8 is over here and the 5 is over here. I'll shift it again and hopefully we get some, well we won't get crazy numbers. I'll go back a couple. Well, not quite as interesting as I wanted, but there's something there. So let's send NO, and you can see it's 90, 00, zero CC, 0 E. I guess it's fate, cheap controls. So for this video, I was mainly just showing you that you can hook up a display to an ESP32 and power it. I don't recommend it. I don't think it's a good idea, but you can do it, and I was interested to know. You can also send negative numbers up to it and the next one will read them just as fine. Now, the question that I had or from the user was in a progress bar or a slider, can you display a negative number? And I did not find a way to do that. But what you could do is you could take a negative number and you could just do a little math on it. So if you had a negative 300 to 300, which is a 600 range, you could add 300 to it to get the range above zero and then make it fit to what you needed. What's nice about the slider is you can set the range on it, the min and max value. So if it was, you can't put a negative in the min, but you could do 0 to 600. And then that way, if your range was a negative 300 to 300, you just add 300 to it, all of your values and it would make it fall within that range and then you could display the actual value in a number field or something like that. Now the progress bar which is right here You can't change the value of this. It's just 0 to 100. So you'd have to do some manipulation on your numbers to make it fit within there. But you can send negative numbers to the next and then you can do some math to manipulate them. But I, it doesn't appear that you can use negative numbers in those two instances. I didn't look at the dial, and I know there's lots of other things in the next -gen. And I also didn't look at other versions other than this basic display. But like I said, I didn't want to hook uh, more expensive display up to my ESP and possibly break one or the other. So, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And like I said, this is the video that that bomb doesn't want you to watch. So, uh, hopefully, you don't break anything after watching it. But it's always fun to try things that they might break things. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.